Christopher Nolan is a true visionary. Thanks to high-profile hits such as the Dark Knight trilogy, Inception, and Interstellar, Nolan is regarded as one of the most talented directors of a generation, and for good reason. Dunkirk is set to take the cinematic experience to the next level. Throughout his career, Nolan has pushed the boundaries of what is possible, relying on traditional techniques instead of ultra-modern technology. But why does this make Nolan unique? As well as creating complex, unique, big-budget blockbusters, Nolan is a devout traditionalist. His approach to filming is rare, thanks to his insistence on shooting in classic film stock and opting for practical effects over CGI whenever possible, taking no shortcuts. Instead of attending film school, Nolan is self-taught, a process he believes helps shape his organic filming style. He paid for his first feature, The Following, shooting scenes on weekends while working full-time. That was followed by the non-linear gem Memento and Insomnia, his first film in a long-running partnership with Warner Brothers. As the budgets increased, Nolan stayed true to his craft, refusing to bow to modern trends as his popularity and influence grew. In The Dark Knight, when Heath Ledger's Joker blows up the hospital, what you see is a real explosion. To make Gotham as enchanting as possible, Nolan shot some select scenes in IMAX 70mm film, including the Joker's introduction. In Inception, one of the most visually striking scenes occurs when Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, Arthur, is involved in a zero-gravity fight scene in the dream world. Rather than use CGI, Nolan used a huge rotating set in a World War I hangar outside of London. A crew of more than 500 helped assist, and shooting the scene took three weeks. Nolan stuck to his guns with the final entry in the Dark Knight trilogy. He rejected the use of 3D and focused on the higher image quality with IMAX. Whereas The Dark Knight includes 28 minutes of footage shot in IMAX, The Dark Knight Rises includes over an hour. Nolan went to space for his next feature, Interstellar, again preferring to shoot on film using a combination of IMAX 70mm, 70mm, and 35mm. Although green screen was used, many effects were achieved practically. Nolan had a practical rig set up for filming scenes in the spaceship's cockpit, which Nolan himself could operate and move around with hydraulics. However, that rig is nothing compared to the lengths Nolan went to in filming Dunkirk. Talking of his previous experiences prior to filming the World War II epic, he said, As well as the entire movie being shot on film, most of it is shot on the high-quality, ultra-sized IMAX 70mm. Despite this being cumbersome to use, as the cameras are costly, loud, and weigh 54 pounds, no scenes were too impractical for Nolan. He even used IMAX to shoot Tom Hardy inside the cockpit of a real Spitfire aircraft. As the use of film is dying out in the industry, Nolan's work promises to be not only immersive, but an experience that won't be possible in years to come. This is one to not only watch, but to experience. See it in IMAX 70mm if you can, the way Hollywood's visionary Christopher Nolan intended.